Hey guys, today's video is mostly for men. I suppose this could go for lesbian relationships too. But uh, the number one thing that you don't want to do with a woman is put them on a pedestal. Um, the rates of narcissism are just increasing, 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 increasing. Um, but the problem is when you put a, put a woman on a pedestal, she starts treating you like you're in the fan club, like you're in a fan. It actually ends up lowering your value in her eyes when you put her on a pedestal. Because the truth is, you watching this video, you have a lot of value too. Um, if your girlfriend is not validating you as a worthwhile person, most likely you're dealing with a narcissistic woman. Um, this was the case with a woman that I used to date. She was a full-blown narcissist that literally had 30, 40 boyfriends. And I literally put this woman on a pedestal. Um, like I said, she was a full-blown narcissist. Um, she had a huge, a huge garage of old boyfriends that she could call up for manipulative purposes. She loved to play triangulation games with me. Like one time I was out to a restaurant with her. She literally invites another man while we're at the table, Texas man. He literally shows up at the restaurant. I didn't even know he was going to show up. This is an example of triangulation that narcissist women do. She was trying to triangulate me against the other man. She was trying to push me away. That's a pushing away behavior. Um, I think she also suffered with a little bit of borderline personality because the problem with borderline is anytime they feel like you're getting too close, they start pushing you away. Um, they manufacture fights. So everything can be going great with you guys for weeks, for months, and out of the blue, they're going to manu manufacture a fight. Um, like a perfect example, um, I have a girl that that I'm involved with. It's a that's a, one of my best friends. She's a super sweet girl. Um, and I ended up calling her babe a lot and she kind of wants me to just be a friend. So she got annoyed with the babe stuff. Um, but, but the thing of it is, is I, I, I called her babe for like probably the last six months and it never was an issue. And then all of a sudden the neighbor started making fun of her, started, you know, making fun of her because of me calling her babe. Um, her ex-boyfriend lives next door, so most likely it's an ex-boyfriend that's just trying to get in her pants again, so he's trying to push me away so he can get to the girl. Um, this is a girl I've known for about 16 years, um, and like I said, so that's an example of women picking fights. Here I had called, you know, my friend, Babe, who I'm super close to. I've known her for about 16 years. Um, and then, you know, the Babe wasn't an issue, but then when the neighbor started making fun of her, then she started feeling like she had to push me away. She probably felt like she had to validate that ex-boyfriend, you know, as top dog or something. So then she started pushing me away. She started getting upset with me, started saying she needed space. Um, I, I confronted her on a couple things. She blocks me right away on Facebook and then adds me back like the next day. Um, so women are very impulsive. That's where you're going to get the blocking, the unblocking. Um, a lot of times this is coming from BPD women, from narcissistic women. Um, but, the, but men out there, women out there, the number one thing you cannot do with these women is pet up, put them on a pedestal because they start viewing you as less than. They start viewing you as a fan. They start viewing you as in the fan club. I mean, I remember my, my BPD girlfriend, she was so sweet, so, so pretty. I mean, yes, she had bad character, so I'm not going to make excuses for that. Like, this is a girl I would help, and then she would ghost me three weeks later. Like, I let her stay at my house when she was freezing to death in her car. And then she moves out three weeks later and ghosts me. That's what you're going to get from BPD women, from narcissistic women, because it's a cluster B personality. They have no regard for your feelings. They don't care if you're upset. Um, they don't care how anything affects you. I mean, literally, I have not seen this woman since she moved out of my apartment. I had an old apartment and um, the dogs had become a problem. They were yapping, yapping, yapping. And my landlord kicks this girl's dog dogs out. She literally moves out the next day and have not seen her since. Um, that's, that's what you're going to get from narcissistic people. As soon as you're not meeting their needs, as soon as you're not doing exactly what they want, like in this case, she wanted to stay at my house with her dogs. As soon as she wasn't getting what she wants, she immediately blocks me immediately makes me feel like I've done something wrong. 
immediately starts playing the victim like I'm some sort of an abuser because I had to ask the dogs to go. Literally, this woman has not come to see me for almost three years. And she literally calls me out of the blue, freezing to death in her car in the winter. You know, and out of the kindness of my heart, I let her come stay. And then she ghosts me three weeks later. And it's going on almost three years since I've seen her. This is the heartless behavior, very heartless behavior that you're going to get from borderlines, that you're going to get from narcissistic individuals. Is this every borderline? No. Is this every narcissist? No. It's the borderlines that have antisocial personality as a co-occurring disorder. Those are the heartless ones. The narcissist with a co-occurring of antisocial personality disorder. Those are the heartless narcissists. You know, another narcissistic girl I graduated with asked me to put the internet in my name at her apartment, even though I don't live there. I said no. She immediately ghosts me. Immediately ghosts me and I haven't seen her since. This is going on almost six months since I've seen this girl. Um, so like I said, they don't care if you're upset. They don't care if you're suicidal. They don't care if you kill yourself. These people with a cluster B personality, they're very entitled. They, they're very selfish. They don't care if you're upset. They actually, some, some narcissists, some abusive narcissists that have antisocial personality disorder, they actually like to abuse you. They actually get, they actually laugh when you're upset. They laugh when you're scared. They laugh when they upset you. They laugh when you're stressed out when you're anxious. They love to push those buttons because it makes them feel like they have some sort of sense of control, especially if you ended the relationship. If they can scare you, they laugh about that because some of these narcissists have an evil side. I don't know if it's demons. I don't know if it's just bad character, but they enjoy scaring you. They, they enjoy hurting you. They enjoy making you upset. They enjoy making you feel like a loser making you feel like you have no friends. Oftentimes, this is a result of them trying to punish you for sticking up for yourself, for getting back your resources. Um, it's ridiculous the level that some narcissists will go to, go through, you know? Um, like, I, like I have a friend that's narcissistic and I'd, I'd say it to his face, he's a narcissist because he's not thinking about my feelings. The guy literally, the guy literally lived at my house for seven years and then I had to move home because my apartment rent was too much. Immediately when I asked him to move out, he immediately ghosts me and goes to a different woman, marries a different woman. This was my best friend for like 10 years. He doesn't care if I'm upset. He doesn't care if I'm uh, uh, suicidal. He doesn't care if I'm hurting. He just is only thinking about himself but I'd probably be the first person that he'd call if he was in an emergency, you know, if he was on, you know, death's door and he needed help or if he needed, you know, something, he'd probably reach out to me and ask for help. Um, that's what you're going to get from narcissists. They only call you when they need something. Um, just like that girl had ghosted me for two years and then she needed a place to, to, to stay. She immediately unblocks me, starts liking my Facebook post. Um, you know, me and my friend, we were super close, super close. But because he has narcissism, he's not thinking about me. He's not thinking about my feelings. He's not thinking about how his ghosting has affected me. He's not thinking about, you know, how I feel about all of that. Because it's not fun to be ghosted by a friend. Um, more than likely, he was just upset that I asked for my house back. Maybe he didn't want to move. Maybe he didn't want to build a new house. Because I think he built a new house after he left here. Um. So that's what you're going to get from narcissists, guys. But the number one thing that you don't want to do with these women is put them up on a pedestal because they take it for granted. They start seeing you as a fan. They start feeling super entitled. You know, you start pet pet putting them on a pedestal. Now they're asking you for stuff. They're asking you for rides. They're asking you for money. They're asking you for to pay their internet because narcissists are very entitled. They're very entitled people. They want you to help them but they're not going to help you. They're not going to step up and help you with your life. You know, um, you can be super nice to a narcissist and it doesn't matter. Like my tenants last year here, literally he asked me for an extra year so he could build his house because I was going to have him go a, a year early. He asked me, he said, Steve, can I have an extra year? I need an extra year to build my house. I gave him that extra year. And I gave him his last two months of rent free. And then he still ghosts me after he moves out. That's an example of 
the heartless behavior, you know, and I would even say it to his face that what he did to me was heartless because I was his best friend. And like I said, he never paid that security deposit. I, I gave him $840 out of my Applebee's money so that him and his family could transition to their new house and be happy. Uh, cause my apartment rent was too much. Um, to this day, I'm still waiting for an apology from this person, but I'm probably not going to get it because narcissists won't ever be accountable. They won't ever admit when they're wrong. They won't admit that they've done something wrong or that they've wronged you. <laughs> like in this case, I gave the guy his last two months rent free, even though he didn't pay a security deposit and he still ghosts me. And to this day, won't talk to me, won't answer my emails. Um, so that's what you're going to get from narcissists, guys. As soon as you're not useful to them, they leave. As soon as you're not useful to them, they ghost you. As soon as you're not use useful to them, they block you. But they're going to unblock you when they need you. You know, that's the case with the girl that I was in love with, the pretty girl. She ghost me several times, two years at a time. And it was always her hitting me up when she needed something. You know, it can even be sex. Like one time she ghosted me for two years and then hit me up for a one night stand after she had a bad breakup with a boyfriend. And then in the second Hoover was her homeless in her car. So, but that was the, that was actually the reason. The reason why I'm doing this video is because me putting her on a pedestal is the reason why our relationship did not work. Because what I had done was put her way above me in her mind, because she was a narcissist, I was just blowing smoke up her ass constantly. So then she felt entitled to have 30 boyfriends. You know, I'm not going to settle down with Steve because he thinks I'm a model. He thinks I'm pretty. He thinks I'm sweet. So I'm just going to have 30 boyfriends. You know, so then I got 30 couches to stay on. 30 people making me pot cookies. 30 people uh, where I could go stay in an emergency. Um, these narcissistic women, they won't settle down with good guys like me because they don't want to give up their narcissistic supply. They'd rather have 20 or 30 boyfriends than settle down with you because like in this case, the pretty girl, she literally has 30 guys in her DMs sending her dick pics. She's got young guys that are 25, 20 years old sending her dick pics. How can a 41-year-old like me compete against a 21-year-old's body? I really can't, but the narcissist women will ghost guys like me that are super good to them. Like I was super loving to the, to the borderline, the, my borderline ex. I was super loving to her. Those three weeks that she showed up, I drove her to jail and bailed her out of jail. I, I you know, I drove her and her sister around, drove her around because she had lost her license for an OUI. And then literally when the dogs got kicked out, she ghosted me guys. So that's what you're going to get. As soon as you're not useful to the narcissist, they ghost you. So I recommend not really getting attached to these people, not getting close because the problem with narcissism and borderline is more than likely, it's like nine out of 10 cases, they have an inability to attach to you in a healthy way. So you're attaching to them, but they're not attaching to you. Um, so how can you go about dating these women without putting themselves, putting them on a pedestal, you know, start seeing your own value, start building yourself up, um, start focusing on your strengths. You know, maybe you could get a gym membership, like that's something I've been wanting to do is lift weights again. Um, I shouldn't have been pedis, ped, putting her on a pedestal. I should have said, you have value and I have value. And it would have been an equal agreement. But because I put that narcissist female way up on a pedestal, she started seeing me as a fan. She started seeing me as less than. She started seeing me as not worthy of her. Like I said, she had 30 guys trying to fuck her. So she couldn't make up her mind. It's been proven when you have multiple options, it's hard to make up your mind. And that's what happened to her. She literally had 30 guys trying to fuck her at any good, at any given time. That's why she wouldn't settle down with guys like me. Like one time, one time um, she had a one night stand with me and she was talking about getting close to me, being my girlfriend. And then another boyfriend hit her up on social media and she ghosted me again. Thanks social media. Social media has ruined the dating world. Social media has made it almost impossible for, for good men like me to keep a woman because she has so much supply thanks to Facebook, thanks to Instagram. I mean, it would blow your mind. If you were to check my pretty ex-girlfriend's DMs, it would blow your mind. More than likely 30 guys trying to fuck her, 30 guys trying to give her money, trying to give her free housing. That's what you get. But we know what she don't get. She only thinks about the short term. She's not thinking about the long term. 
because her looks are going to fade. And then what? And then what? She's going to end up alone with those cats and the bottle of wine, right? But definitely don't put your girlfriend on a pedestal. It always ends up backfiring. Thank you so much, guys. You have value. Start recognizing your value. That's how you get out of this pedestal bullshit. Start recognizing your value. Start building yourself up. Start realizing you're the prize as well. Um, because when you make the, the woman the prize, she just she, it just blows smoke up her ass. And then she feels like you're not worthy of her because you're, you're putting her on a pedestal. Um, until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a blessed week. I hope you guys have a safe week. Remember to try to stay positive. We're all in this shit show together. Um, you can like, subscribe, and, and uh, share. Until next time, uh, I am Steve, and I hope you guys have a great, great evening. Thank you so much. Bye.